And joining me now is Democratic Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island. Uh, Senator, before I get to the Supreme Court uh, goings on today, I just want to get your comment on this, uh, this special counsel report that I'm holding in my hot little hands here uh, about the Biden classified documents situation, their non-prosecution decision. Your thoughts? Well, the uh, Department of Justice did what it should do, which is to appoint a special prosecutor, a special counsel to look into the matter. Special counsel is independent, looked into the matter, decided there is nothing to prosecute. As far as I'm concerned, that settles the question. Well, we will hear what the president has to say about it uh, a little bit later on in the hour. But I do want to get to this this hearing today. It was fascinating to listen to. And just to my ear, just listening to it uh, as these oral arguments were made, it was striking to me to hear the first voice uh, in each of the segments and sessions being uh, Justice Clarence Thomas. He is the senior most judge, which is, for our audience, why he was allowed to speak first each time, so he gets that deference. But uh, I think we all remember that his wife, Jenny Thomas, was materially involved in the insurrection. She sent multiple emails to Mark Meadows. She was a huge advocate of Donald Trump remaining in power after losing the election. I could go on and on and on. These guys did sign uh, this brand new ethics, um, you know, their, their, new, their sort of new ethics guidelines. What do you make of the fact that he did not recuse? Well, let's start with the fact that the failure to recuse isn't just an ethics violation, it's a violation of law. Congress passed a law requiring recusal in certain circumstances. So this isn't just something within the judicial branch that's just a matter of, you know, judicial propriety. It's law-breaking to sit on a case where you don't belong. And with respect to Thomas, this is the third time he has sat on and decided a case related to the insurrection, sat on the case of the January 6th commissions, access to records, which might well have revealed the records of his wife's contacts with the Trump chief of staff. He sat on the Arizona uh, election investigation case uh, after his wife was involved with calling into Arizona to ask to have ballots overturned. And now he's involved in this case. And the problem across all three of those cases is we don't know what the facts are. In any other proceeding, you'd have to do some sort of fact-finding. You'd know what his wife did, what he knew, when he knew it, and all of that is simply not present. This Supreme Court hides behind a cloud of uh, obscurity with respect to the facts, and that allows a judge like Thomas to make his own decision without anybody being able to check on him and say, well, actually, you know, on those facts, that's not right. You start with fact-finding in any legal matter, and the court refuses to allow fact-finding. Right. I mean, it, it just was sort of striking to see, you know, you, you call them a Leo Six, if you want, Leonard Leo's pals there. I mean, you have Samuel yeah. Alito arguing across the room from the guy who wrote the bounty hunter bill in Texas, his, con, you know, his co-conspirator in trying to deprive women of rights over their own bodies. You've got the, uh, you know, and he's also another uh, vacation, uh, expensive vacation fan. You've got three people who sat on the who were worked for George W. Bush in the Bush v. Gore case, including Chief Justice Roberts, uh, Amy Coney Barrett and Kavanaugh being the other two, arguing that one state shouldn't get to decide who the president is. Hello. That was the case y'all worked on um, yeah. in Bush v. Gore. They let Florida decide. They, they decided it for Florida. Correct. One state. Correct. And so it just, I wonder if we're at a point now where the Supreme Court's reputation is so desiccated that a, you know, ruling to keep Trump on the ballot, which seems to me to be their sort of political decision that they want to make, will just feel kind of grimy to a lot of Americans. I think it will. And it's not just the Supreme Court as an institution. It's also the uh, principles that they purport to champion. If you listen to the argument, the questions were all about, well, what happens if, and what are the political outcomes? What are the results? What are the policy outcomes? How do we balance the interests here? Those are all considerations that they pretend to scorn. They pretend to be plain language folks, strict constructionists, originalists, until plain language, strict construction, and originalism would lead them to throw Trump off the ballot. 
in Colorado. And then suddenly all the documents that they long purported to scorn are the ones that are driving their questioning. 